this is nation's voice tower welcome to your most preferred youtube channel if you're just joining us this is that hub that keeps you updated on things that are not even allowed to be said about the political system in nigeria we tell it to you here we also update you on things bothering the welfare of nigerians and the political system in the country and abroad now i have something that is going to shock you of course trust us but don't also forget, my name is Angelo, your uncle, as usual. So, lots of Nigerians have reacted to the ministerial nominee list that was produced by Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, the president of the country. One of which is Kenneth Okwankwo, member of the OBDT Presidential Campaign Council, and also member one of the members or one of the lawyers in the Labour Party um, Legal Council group defending the petition. Kenneth Okwankwo reacted to this ministerial nominee list of Asiwaju on his official Twitter handle, and this was what he wrote. The proposed ministerial list before the Senate is a blatant breach of the Federal Character Principle Commission Act. Listen, no state is allowed to have three ministers when all states have not gotten two, and no geopolitical zone is allowed to have two more than any other geopolitical zone. Now, the Senate should be reading the laws it made for the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria to be properly guided in its screening exercise. He went further to write that this is the most tribalistic and nepalistic regime in the whole world. We are very, very far from democracy and rule of law in this regime. This was what he wrote. In the first part of his tweet after it was said that there was a particular state i don't want to call the name that had three ministerial nominees why why are some states more states than others yes so let me read the other part for you he went further to blow up why because he feels that since nigeria's inception we've always had 37 ministers why is this regime having 47 ministers in the nominee list? This was what he wrote in his Twitter handle. He did not leave anything unturned for the government and presidency. He called out Asiwaju and his vice president, Kashim Shetima. Listen, he said, what a regime. We are heading towards bearing or being the poorest country in the world. <laughs> and this regime is considering setting up the most bloated bureaucracy in the world, which will lead to the highest cost of governance in the whole world. 47 ministers, when the government is only compelled to have 37. Seriously. Now, the money to be used to pay them will eventually be extorted from Nigerians through inordinate taxing and other pricing of essential commodities. And borrowing from outside sources because APC regimes produce nothing. I pity Nigerians under this clueless regime. This is sad. He called out the presidency. Well, my analysis is quite straight and simple. We aren't supposed to have more than 37 ministers as we've always had. Then why would other states... Why will other states be more states than others, having three nominees, some geopolitical zones having more nominees? Why? Seriously. So what I'm trying to say now is, please, I believe in order to cut the cost of governance, it's just better that we cut all these extra ministerial nominees. Who are you trying to impress? What are you impressing? Okay, you're trying to pay uh, or give reward those that were loyal to you during your election, the president, seriously. So that's just the way it is. So I believe that we should work on this and um, let the presidency cut down the cost of governance. Well, I have um, given updates on that Kenneth Okonkwo's reaction to the ministerial nominee list and um, wouldn't say much. That is just the truth. The, the president should cut down the cost of governance. We don't have to have 47 ministers. What for? What for? So that tomorrow you will tell us you have to use 100 billion naira to buy, to buy them cars. Seriously, or you want to use 500 billion naira, or you want to use some outrageous amounts of money to to put them in in their offices and reinstate them? No, we don't need that. Now, 
Let me give you something that will make you shiver or make your spine shiver. Nigerians have reacted, furthermore, to the screening of the ministerial nominees. Lots of Nigerians have reacted, okay? Lots of Nigerians. Lots of Nigerians are not happy with the Senate President, Senator Gosri Lakbabio, for what he did during the ministerial nominee screening. Now, this is it. Lots of ministers were not asked questions because it was supposed to be a screening and lots of them were asked to take a bow. Now, even at that, lots of opposition um, senators were not allowed to grill these ministerial nominees by asking them various questions about their incompetence in previous um, offices held. Let me not say much. I think I will better let you watch this video. Listen to this young man that was talking bitterly about specifically El Rufai, who was not asked plenty of questions. In fact, when a petition was raised against him, it was waved off. Nigeria. So watch this video. When we come back, I will give you a concise analysis on what I think. Stay tuned. Serve the people. So um, I felt that he should have been allowed to react to some of these petitions because look, you're coming for screening. You're not coming. Um, you're, you're, you're not coming for a jamboree. You're coming for screening. Where uh, it, I think it, it boils down to the nature of our nation. Um, that's why I said some Nigerians feel that some of the senators from the opposition should have been able to ask relevant questions. Look, it's not a joke. B being appointed a minister is an office that comes with honor and respect, and it's an office that demands a lot from you. So you can't just walk in and say you're going for a screening and then it's just like take a bow and leave. That's why some Nigerians are basically not happy with the Senate president because it looks like um, from indications it's beginning to look like the 10th assembly is going to be a rubber stamped assembly from the way things are playing out and Nigerians are beginning to ask questions. Look, if you're coming for screening, certain necessary questions should be thrown at you. Questions that relate to your, your, your track records, your performance. I mean, he was governor of Kaduna State, and we saw how things played out. Issues of insecurity, southern Kaduna issue, and all that. These are questions that should be asked, because Nigeria, these are questions that would still keep on hanging around. I mean, look at the Senate president, for instance. But there's no way you talk about him, that people won't ask that ogre off your mighty... It's, I mean, these are links. So, it's, it's necessary they come out to clarify this. But, you know, when it's been um when it now looks like um you know they just walked into the senate and they were just and i i, I told you this on this platform before that the screening process is just going to be a walkover why because the opposition somehow they've been sleeping for instance so it's just an apc thing so you just go in there and take a bow and leave i think it, it will just be the same thing mm. it's i mean it's nigeria so one of the callers spoke about you know um, a party system a party being in power and everything just going their way and all that but for us to genuinely make is you know make progress as a nation i want to see a nation where if you're going for screening yes. you are someone who's been nominated you you all right um you've you watched the video there let me say briefly there here that precisely national el rufai was petitioned by a senator from kogi west over his involvement or over his nonchalance on the insecurity in his state while he was minister while he was governor of kaduna state that petition was waived by the by by the hand and um, Senator Gosu Lakpabio, the, president, the Senate president, told him not to, you know, and so on. Why? Why wouldn't they allow opposition senators to tackle these people? Are you trying to tell us that the 10th Assembly is a rubber stamped assembly, just like the 9th Assembly? Can you see what we're saying? So I don't understand. Every nobody, can we say, is it the whole nominees that were brought on board in that list that were qualified? On our scale through, are they trying to tell us that none of them have a skeleton in his cupboard or in their cupboard? So Nigerians should grow past this. I don't understand what we're doing, but it's fine. I hope that with time, we're going to reach a point where, um, where our ministerial nominee list will be heavily scrutinized, where we'll be left with only four qualified candidates are competent, and then more people will come in. Please, not a rubber stamped Senate that will just quickly wave every other petition against any ministerial nominee with a wave of hand. Please, that is that on that update. Finally, I promised you yesterday that I was going to talk on the effects of a Ganduje chairmanship in the APC.
let me give you a brief clip. I think um, I will show you that clip where he was now announced officially as the chairman of the All Progressive Congress by Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, his, let's say, his godfather. So let me allow you to watch this video. When you come back, or when we are back, I will tell you why I think it is a disaster having Ganduje as the APC chairman. More details when I come back. Most humbled by the trust you bestowed upon me as the national chairman, I am Senator Rajuddin Ajibola Bashiru as national secretary to lead APC towards a brighter future for the betterment of our beloved country. May I also warmly appreciate the leader of our great party, His Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the Suwaju, and Jagabam of Borugu, Borugu for his continued support and commitment to the ideals of our great party, the APC. I would also like to especially acknowledge the contributions of His Excellency, the Vice President, Senator Kashim Shatima, the Senate President, Godswill Fabio, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, Leadership and Caucus of the National Assembly, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Members of the National Working Committee of the Party, Party Elders, and Members of the Caucus. Let me also thank the Progressive Governors Forum and all key stakeholders of our party for their dedication, diligence, and strategic role in the development of our great party. With boundless gratitude for the confidence placed in me by leaders and members of our party, and with an absolute resolve to honor that trust, I humbly accept my appointment as a chairman of our party. There you see. I am deeply touched and inspired by the generous words of congratulations and encouragement I have been receiving and wish to extend my deepest respect and appreciation to all the leaders and members for their strong support. Our main focus will be promoting party unity and defending and increasing the number of executive governors and legislative seats we currently hold. All right, welcome back. Before I go further, our viewers should like our videos, share them. Please don't forget to tap that subscribe button if you are just watching me for the first time. If you've been here and you want to always be with me, please tap the notification bell so that, you know, you will be among the first people with first-hand information anytime I drop a content. Now, I would also urge you to drop a comment for us in the comment section. It's very important. We need those comments so that YouTube would make us go viral for your sake and for our sake. Ganduje Abdullahi is now the chairman of the APC. What does he bring on board? Nothing. What will he do in the APC in Akakus that Abdullahi Ademu couldn't? All right. So that's what I'm trying to say. So let us say it directly. All right. The former um, national chairman resigned. We don't know why. All right. And then all of a sudden, Ganduje is now the chairman. Can you remember the alleged um, breakout or the viral audio that went viral? A conversation between Abdullah uh, Ganduje and um, Malam Masari, the former vice presidential nominee of the APC. It went viral in Hausa language. We translated it and brought it to you here on Nations Voice Tower. That particular conversation where he was complaining about uh, him not uh, being considered why will the president call Kwankwaso to meet with him for what while they are here and so on Ganduje's name was not in the ministerial nominee list we all thought he would not be compensated for what he did over time and now he is the APC chairman he is even bigger than the minister <laughs> do you now understand now 
it will foster more enmity because he's going to use that time and address those people who were his enemies during his time as governor of Kano State. We will have the issue between him and Kwankwaso. I know Kwankwaso may not ever think of joining the APC, but maybe, maybe Governor Abba Yusuf, Abba Gida Gida, might, because they have an enmity that is yet to be resolved. So there are lots of issues. Remember that the APC National Working Committee opposed a Ganduje chairmanship. But how come all of a sudden they are there smiling, trying to congratulate him, you know, and so on and so forth. That means something is somewhere. Because as Siwaju is with him, nobody dares oppose him. Let's see what he will bring to the table of the APC. Thank you so much for staying with us. Stay tuned for my next update. See you next time. Bye.